Hello everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for this video. I want you guys to meet Eric here today. Um, his channel, well, we met through your reader as well, right? Yes. So um, Divine Conversations is his channel. And um, we wanted to talk, a f well, there's a few things that I think that people will probably benefit from us talking today. The first thing is about, I kind of want to give people um, a bit of hope that start that are maybe new to this journey. <laughs> your, your face is like, oh, yeah. <laughs> because people are going through this journey so much quicker now than they used to. Like, I've been on the Twin Flame journey for three and a half years and I've just come through it. I couldn't but, even imagine being on it for that long. I personally have really only been on it for a little over, consciously at least, little over a year. Um, because before the connection between me and my twin really kicked off and I started to feel a lot of the, the emotions and the telepathy and all that stuff, I had, I had an activation, I want to say maybe a year prior to that. Um, but it wasn't until I had really made moves to um, leave my karmic marriage and I had cleared out a lot of that space that the connection itself really kicked in. And it's been a little over a year, like a year and I want to say two months since. And I really feel like I've come to some sort of completion to a certain extent, because um, I don't know what's going to go on, what's going to happen in the future, but I'm very much past all of the other stuff that I had been going through over the last year. Yeah. You're like in a place where it's okay now. It's very okay. I think, yeah, I think that's the main, because we go, like, when we go through the, I call it, it's like a tunnel, isn't it? Yeah. Like going through this darkness. And then you do get to a point where you're like, I don't know what the future looks like, but I'm okay yes. right now. And that is a big thing because I never thought I'd be there. And you probably felt the same. <laughs> if you had asked me this time, like it's November 26th right now. If you had asked me this time last year or told me that I would be um, very much removed, very much detached from the whole situation and moving in my own direction, looking for you know, continuing to look for what it is or continuing to manifest what it is I truly desire without this one person, I would have looked at you like you had six heads and told you you were absolutely bonkers. <laughs> bonkers. Yeah. yeah, I think we all go through that. I think we all go, I think that's what's so scary because like if I don't get that, then what happens to me? Right. That's there's very much, there's very much an energy within the collective um, and I don't, I don't want to, devalue this because it's an energy that I absolutely felt myself, but it's almost as if there's no one else out there that can, um, the word that comes to mind is complete you, but see, that's the biggest, that's one of the biggest parts of the journey itself. You have to learn to complete yourself. You have to learn to come into union with yourself. And that's what's happening for a lot of us now. And that's allowing us to move forward. But, um, at the, when you're in the depths of it, you really feel like there's no one else out there in the world for you. And then, you know, you get triggered or you get pushed into healing and bringing the divine masculine and divine feminine within together. And then you realize it's almost as if the whole world opens up for you. It's like, this is, it's actually, I'm, you start to really understand how limitless you are. Yeah. I love how you just said you have to bring, when you bring the masculine and the feminine together within yourself, because it is that we have both the energies. But I remember, did you ever have this? I remember going through a phase of feeling really masculine and having to do, get loads of stuff done. And then, and then everything settled. And I was like, what was that? Well, thought, that's kind of what I've been dealing with right now. I actually grew up feeling much, much more feminine. Um, and it's and like, that's always been a thing for me. And um, once I started doing this journey, it, that that began to make sense because I was seeing how, you know, one person embodies more of the masculine, one person embodies more of the feminine. But then as I really started to do the work, the masculinity within me came out and I've very much been in my masculine energy for quite some time, just yeah. having so much to do, wanting so much to do and wanting to get it done. But the universe has kind of been forcing me to rest because... Uh, that's still a little bit of an imbalance. Yeah, yeah. It's funny how, like I only realized this the other day, there were things that I wasn't doing because I thought, no, I'm, I have to wait. No. Like I was, I was in a waiting energy for a long, like maybe three and a half years, the whole time I was in waiting energy. Wow. Um, 
but I realized that when I stopped waiting and started doing the things that I wanted, I wanted to have it with someone else, but I have to have them for myself. I was actually embodying both the masculine and the feminine. Like for me, moving into my own place, I, I didn't do that for a long time because I wanted to move elsewhere. Right. But actually, now that I'm here on my own, like I have to take care of my place, right? I have to pay the bills. I have to clean it. <laughs> <laughs> I need a cleaner so bad. <laughs> I have to do all these things. So I have to be the masculine, but then the work that I do within the place is feminine and I, I get to be the feminine. So by stepping out of that waiting and doing things that I needed from someone else for myself, mm -hmm. I'm embodying the masculine and the feminine. Right. Isn't that, right. It's it's weird and it's a lot to handle. Um, I know for me, it, I went through a long period of time where I was like, well, I'm not, I'm not waiting for him. I'm just, I mean, I'm still doing my own thing, but I'm not, I'm not waiting for him. But that was kind of a lie. Yes, I really was waiting for him. Uh, <laughs> and it was yeah. during the time period where a lot of the, the guides that were out there were, in, were guiding us to hold us, hold space for the divine masculine or your divine feminine, whichever way, whichever way, whichever part of the spectrum you were on. And to me, I feel like I understand why people were saying that, but at the same time, it felt, it, and now at this point, it feels a little deceptive because in consciously holding a space for someone or holding a place for someone, you are kind of waiting for them to, to come in and accept that space within you. And it wasn't until I basically got fed up we're just going to be honest. I got fed up and I was like, I screw this. I don't want to wait anymore. And that's when I started to entertain the idea of someone else being a companion. But that's when the true union within started to happen because I started to realize if another person or this one person that my spirit guides in the universe have been telling me is the person is not necessarily wanting to follow through with the guidance they're getting, um, because of free will, there is no reason for you to be, quote, left out in the cold in that sense. And in honesty, you're really only just holding your, like, leaving yourself out in the cold by denying that true love or that divine love to come in from whatever place the divine um, feels it's best for you, even if that doesn't include your twin. Yeah. So it wasn't until then that I had to, I got through all of the, the shame basically and the guilt of allowing someone else to take that space. And then I really realized, wow, it, it's really not even about the, the romantic re relationship or the union and the external. It's really more about the, uni the union within. Yeah. I'm totally in awe. Like everything you just said, just <laughs> I feel the energy like moving through me. I was just like in awe of you right there. Oh, just, thank like, you. I appreciate that. Um, it's you put you you worded that beautifully like you couldn't have worded that any better oh thanks i mean it's yeah. it's it was difficult to get to <laughs> i'm not yeah. gonna lie <laughs> but you did it really quickly that's that's why i think like i want to give people hope because yeah i mean i i mean i know people on the journey that have been doing it for 10 20 years i remember someone left a comment months ago around the time i first started that they had been on the journey for like 30 some odd years and that just what <laughs> that See, that's beyond me. I just, that's scary. That's a long time. I but can't imagine. I guess now the reason people are going through it so much quicker is because there is support out there. Because like right. people like us put these videos out and we tell people how to move through it. Whereas then, 30 years ago, I there bet it wasn't. There's nothing out there for about this. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm like more power to you all, uh, all of y'all in the older generations that have been dealing with this, man, my heart goes out to you. Much love and respect because... Yeah. I can't, I really, I, and I've said it quite often, I don't know what I would do, regardless of having the channel, I don't know what I would do without the community as a whole, because it wasn't until I found the Twin Flame videos that I really just, I, was, I figured out what was actually going on, and that was a huge weight off my shoulders. Yeah, yeah. And everyone supports each other. Like, whenever I do my lives, everyone is talking amongst themselves. And I've had people say, oh, I've made friends through your channel, so I wanted to say thanks. And I get, you know, and people support me because we're all going through this journey together. So it's so nice that we have, we have that. But yeah, I, I mean, three and, a half, three and a half years was enough for me. <laughs> I, think <you> kind of, <laughs> I think you kind of go through stages, though, of going, being like, do you know what? Like anger, I am not doing this anymore. And then you go through the bitterness, and then you go through the sadness, and then you come up, then you come out the other end. That's where I feel most of us are. We've gone through the anger and the frustration, and we've kind of accepted. Yes. And 
it does feel like we were saying earlier, it feels like there is a closure now in November. Yes. I suppose if you think about it, it's the 11th month. Right. It's like the, door, the door is closing. That's right. The portal is closing. I, and it's funny because I felt like, um, well, during, during the 21st and the 22nd, so that's the Thanksgiving and the day before, there was a lot of collective energy that I was picking up on. And I mentioned it in one of my morning coffee readings, but um, it was for Friday, the 23rd. But there was so much sorrow and pain and sadness surrounding the fact that many of us are not actively with our twins, let alone speaking to them. So um, I really feel like that was a, a major last purge for a lot of us. Um, and I, and I, I'll, and of course, it has everything else to do with like family situations and personal stuff and all that. But um, now that we've kind of hit that first hurdle of Thanksgiving here, at least here in the United States, and um, we had a full moon that night, that really helped a lot of us clear away the final pieces, or at least start to clear away the final pieces of the pain, the sorrow, the attachment even. And we're really in a position of becoming okay with how things have transpired and moving forward from here. Yeah. So. Did you, did you I mean, around, we didn't do Thanksgiving here, but around the full moon, I think it was the day before, that was when I released the last of it, it felt like. Yeah, it was the, it was, for me, it was the day before where it really started. I mean, I had been feeling it anyway, because um, Mercury has gone retrograde through Sagittarius, and that's a major change, a major purge, and then the full moon energy started to come through. So it was the day before, and then halfway through the actual day of it, um, all the way up into, like, I was traveling to some family's house with my parents, and right before we got to the house is when the energy or the sadness or the sorrow finally lifted. Now for me, I was dealing with a lot of purging when it comes to how my family views me. And I came to a realization that most of that was just um, me projecting it onto them. I don't, even though I'm very intuitive and I'm, I'm empathic and I pick up on people's emotions and stuff, it really wasn't as bad as I had thought. And I realized that I was keeping the drama going, perpetuating the drama by keeping the thoughts I had surrounding it. And so when I changed my thoughts about it, then the energy changed. And the, it's the same as for the situation with your twin. The more you keep the drama going in your head, the more that energy is going to live within you and it's just going to be tumultuous the whole time. Yeah. Do you think we've learned so much, like being on the journey and trying to do different things to be in union or do different things to kind of be in that energy? Like I've learned so much about yes. how to be. Like I wouldn't, I didn't chase things. Right. Chase things. See now, you and I share. See, we both share that Aries energy, and so that. It's a big deal. The <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> it's still. It's hard. It's a fine line because it's like, well, I, I know what I want, and I see it. It's right there. Why can't I just like go after it? But. Yeah. Sometimes the universe is like, no, you have to let it come to you. Yeah, it doesn't feel right. I, I couldn't, I don't think I could chase anything right now. I know when it's time to take action as a masculine, I yeah. know when the energy's picked up, I'm like, right, I'm going to go for it. And as an yeah. Aries, I'm, I'm there before anyone, right? <laughs> but I know when it's like, no, I'm just going to stay in the energy and just feel, feel it out first and then right. let it come to me. And I learned that being on the journey and I learned so many things. Just yeah, the, one, and actually what goes what falls right in line with that point is learning that if something isn't meant for you, you, you don't have to worry about it. So that's why you don't actually, and this was a big lesson I think for the divine feminine as a collective, you don't have to go after something just because you feel like you feel the connection or you are afraid of losing it. If you lose it, it's something that you weren't meant to have to begin with. So it's more about balancing that masculine and feminine energy and knowing when the time is right because the energies are right to make some sort of move. Yeah. Yeah. That was a really hard lesson for me to learn. Let me tell you. Yeah. <laughs> but Hey, it was worth it. The star signs that we are, I swear we have to overcome certain like attributes that come with like being Aries, yeah. um, having to learn to be patient and not chase after things. Yeah. Having school through with me, I had to learn to, you know, because that sting does come out. Yeah. Um, you have to learn, like, 
on the journey, what, the star signs that we have, it's like we have to kind of learn how to, in a way, it makes it more challenging. If exactly. an Aries can learn to be patient and not chase after something, that's a big deal. That is a that's huge a big deal. deal. Big deal. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But it's but all worth it in the end. It is all worth it in the end. It is all worth it in the end. I hope people know that mm -hmm. because now that we've gone through it, and I'm sure you'll agree, my life, I'm so blessed. Yes. I've been finding, I've been consciously taking the time to be grateful for everything that I have, the abilities, the life that I have, you know, the, you know, the fact that I have a warm bed to sleep in at night and food to eat, the means to buy and cook food, like to all of that. It's, it's really, it's really helped me open my eyes to the blessings that we all have every day. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I'm pretty, I am pretty confident or I believe that that's the whole point of this journey. Yes. Absolutely. And a lot of us might feel duped. I know I did for a while, but um, <laughs> being the, the, I'll say it this way, the being the stubborn and egotistical race of beings that we are a lot of the time, sometimes the universe has to contrive ways to get us to do what it is we came here to do because ultimately a lot of the times our egos will get in the way and we'll think it knows best when in reality, it doesn't really have the full scope of what's actually happening. So this is why the lessons of learning to trust and faith in yourself, in your intuition, but also in the universe, number one is so important, but number two was so difficult to learn because your ego's here saying one thing and the universe is saying another. And then when you actually come out of it and you see what was going on, you're kind of like, oh my God, I've been cheated. Well, no, you weren't cheated you were just being led down the path so that you could do the work and have the end result that you came here to get to begin with. It's like the carrot. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and that's so, I mean, that's, that's like, oh God, that's terrible. But at the same time, I mean, it worked, didn't it? <laughs> I, I think I did a video about this like a year ago and I said, because someone was like, oh, my twin, he, they're perfect for me, they're this, they're that. I'm like, yeah, they're designed to be like that mm -hmm. because they're the carrot. Mm -hmm. just keep chasing it and then one day you'll be free that's right one day you'll wake up and be like and say oh my god what was i doing what was i chasing after you know what because like when i have my awakening I, I woke up like that when i had my first time my awakening a few years ago and then i did it again whenever i went through this like a few months ago i woke up and i was like yeah what am i doing Stop yeah me. and actually that's not a bad thing i really feel like that's you um, getting more of the message from your initial awake awakening. You had to go through some of the, the, I guess, a purging process, and then you reawaken again, and you're like, oh, geez, really? <laughs> it happened again. Yeah. It's funny, because I had all the same, I don't know, if, well, I had all the same symptoms as yeah. when I first had my awakening. Because when I first had my awakening, I went vegetarian. I couldn't, I didn't want any meat. I just want, I craved lettuce. I, I think I might be the only person that craved, I was like, <laughs> I, was, I remember, like, I was at home, and I was in San Diego, and I had, like, a ball of lettuce so I was biting into it like an apple that's All awesome of, I know well I wanted it with fruit and veg and then <laughs> I went eventually went vegan and stuff and then yeah it was like a few months ago I thought I just want fruit and veg and I thought something's happening and then I woke up one day and I was like I'm good for me things the awakening was really gradual for quite a while um ever since I was a very young kid I've always been to a bit into um, the occult and tarot and stuff like that. And so I slowly kind of built my way up until my, my previous marriage, where it came to a point where all of a sudden things were just accelerating like crazy. And it wasn't even attached to this person that is considered my twin flame. It was all happening independently. Like I had an activation where um, I was walking our dogs and I, I explained this in, a, in one of my, previous readings but I was walking my dogs and I had this vision of being on fire just being engulfed in flames and the feeling I had was I I just wanted to be of help I wanted to be a beacon a light a torch for people to follow fast forward months later and all of a sudden I realized I'm on a twin flame journey and I was like oh my god that makes perfect sense yes I like yeah it was yeah. a lot <laughs> <laughs> a lot <laughs> yeah oh my god I do feel like I look back and I think I don't know how I went through that I don't know how I did that 
I, I you it. honestly until and many of us wouldn't even don't even think we could go yeah. through a lot of the things that we do until we get there yeah. you know and it feels crippling at the time but whatever it breaks down within you is only going to end up becoming built up stronger again yeah. and we never get given more than we can handle exactly i think we're stronger than we realize yeah big time Sometimes you don't want to fight but it's like no you can and you will get up <laughs> Big time, absolutely. I mean, there have been some real crippling moments for me over the past year um, and really like cringeworthy moments. And I look back on it now and I think for all the people that, were, uh, that have been around me that aren't necessarily on this journey, have no idea what's really going on, mm -hmm. how, I, I, I can't even imagine they still even want, would want to be friends with me, but then, you know, I come back and I get stronger and I and, and whatnot. And it's like, they, they're all still there. None of them think I'm crazy anymore. I don't even think any of them really thought I was that crazy to begin with. So yeah. now, and so that alone is, is just reassuring, you know, it's like, it's like, this is actually, not only is this helping you, the, the individual that's in the thick of it, but it's also helping a lot of people around you and you really may not even be consciously aware of it. Yeah, because you turn your light on, right? And then when mm -hmm. your light is on, people... Because I've had all the people around me wake up. Yep. I kind of feel like that's what's happening for me, too, in a way. Yeah. And not by, like, forcing them to. Because when I woke up, I wanted to go around and shake everyone and go, wake up. But you can't. You so can't. I was like, I'm giving me whatever this is. And then within about a year, I was like, they're starting to wake up. They're starting to wake up. And now I've got, a whole pe I've got people around me everywhere that are just awake. Yeah. And, I, and a lot of them, and for others of you that are watching this, you know, you may be going through the same thing, but they're not necessarily going to tell you. It's something you're just going to know. You're just going to feel it and see it in them. And it's not even something that you should really even point out to them right away unless they start to give you hints that they want to have some sort of conversation like that. Because you're probably, if you do that, you're probably going to trigger them, scare them, and it's it, it whatnot. So just be aware of it, honor that. But until they come towards you saying, hey, uh, like talking about certain stuff, leaving the doorway open for it, let them get there on their own. Yeah, I think I learned that from Abraham Hicks because they would always say, unless someone asks the question, don't give them the answer. Like don't yeah. just force them from one. If they ask, then you can tell them because they're ready to know. But right. unless they ask, they're not ready to know. Right. I, we have to, I learned that the hard way by trying to go around and shake everyone. I, I learned that the hard way with my twin. Yeah. Even though I was, even though I was hearing um part of him say you know tell me these things tell me tell me tell me when i actually told him it was extremely triggering and it just it was downhill from there so it was like whatever i mean okay yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we learned that mistake once it's like i can't uh -huh. do that again. I have to do it again yeah yeah well if, did you want to tell everyone about your channel so that everyone knows who you are and what you do so yes so the, ch the channel is called divine conversations um, I'm coming up on the year anniversary. It'll be one year in January. January 8th will be the year that I started a whole year. Um, but I do Twin Flame readings uh, every week on Sundays. Um, I do monthly Zodiac readings. I do daily readings called Morning Coffee. I encourage you guys. I'm not drinking as much coffee anymore. This is actually green tea. Um, yeah, but uh, it's, a, you know, it's just a daily, uh, daily, a daily energy reading general reading you know come on in see if it resonates with you if it not if it not at the time you know check back later but i do a bunch of special readings i just posted um as of December, uh, november 25th i posted an ascension versus mission reading which is a mirror reading for the divine masculine and the divine feminine separate videos for each sorry there's a truck going by um <laughs> but that shows us where we are in relation to our ascension process and also how that relates to where we are in our mission process um it was a really a strong one for the pat for this month for november um for especially for the divine masculine uh the divine masculine many of them are waking up many of you are waking up um wanting to learn more becoming inspired by the spiritual path and a lot of this has to do with the work that the Divine Feminine has been doing and the, the rise of the Divine Feminine that the whole collective is going through. Um, but yeah, I'm available for personal readings. All of the readings that are, in my, uh, that are available are in the description box of my videos. Go ahead and send me, shoot me an email and let's talk and see what. Now, I do want people to know, um, number one, I'm not a fortune teller. I don't deal with timelines um, and I'm not going to be looking into 
looking deep into, you know, what your twin might be thinking or what might be going on with your twin's karmic partner. Ultimately, that has nothing to do with you. Um, I don't do karmic readings unless you are the person that is in, uh, actively in a karmic relationship with somebody because if, it, if it's somebody else, even if it's not your twin flame, it's just a soulmate that you're connected with or someone you have a crush on and they have some sort of partner, I'm not going to be looking into that because you can't do anything about that situation. That is all them. But other than that, I'm more than happy to help you understand what's going on with your life and help you make a better decision moving forward. Perfect. People, I'm sure, like I, when I found your channel, I just resonated with everything that you were teaching. And even listening to you today, I could just listen to you. So uh -huh. I, I hope people will resonate. I'm sure they Thank will. Thank you. I mean, I, I actually found your channel through what, a very good friend of mine. Some of you that have been on my channel before, you would know her as guacamole. But um, <laughs> she, she, yeah, she recommended Laura to me and I got in on the channel uh, the 10 minute channel of messages from my guides and it really resonated. And I've actually been, even though I've been reluctant to watch twin flame videos <laughs> lately, yeah. Yeah, the, the readings that Laura has been doing have been very, have been resonating a lot, especially recently with this yeah. massive shift that's happened. So I'm very grateful for, to you as well for everything that you do. Thank you. Of course, of course. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll let everyone, um, I'll put um, Eric's link below so you guys can go find his channel. And, I will um, do the same. <laughs> For Laura, of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that way you can find him and, and order readings. And I just think that you're here to help a lot of people. I can feel that in your energy. That's what I, that's really all I want, to be honest. That's really all I want to do. It's just yeah. help. Yeah. And I'm very much, um, I'm very much someone, I, I tend to be an oversharer. It's something that I'm really learning to be, have more boundaries with, but I share with intentions for you guys to understand that I've been through it too. And I, I don't want to just preach. I want to give you examples of how it has manifested in my life and how I've overcome it so that you guys have more of a point of view to understand what's going on so that you can um, make your own decisions. Yeah, perfect. Where's that? All right, we'll say goodbye to everyone. Mwah. Love you guys. Bye, guys. Thank you for joining us.